So you probably remember when you were a child and someone asked you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you didn't have a clue. Perhaps you were honest and admitted this, waiting for the inevitable response of, never mind, there'll be plenty of time, which was less and less reassuring the older that you got. Or perhaps you did kind of have an idea of what you thought you might like to do when you were older and kept it as a stock response to hand out to please the adults. When I was little, I was a painfully quiet and shy child, but I had a real love of performing and genuinely when I stepped on the stage, I could step into being another character, another persona, perhaps that's why I enjoyed it so much, and feel confident and free and happy in whoever I was acting as being. To an adult who first met me, however, this was definitely not apparent, so they would ask what I wanted to be when I grew older, and I would proceed to look at my feet and mumble, I'd like to be an actress, which they inevitably found amusing. In recent years, I've had the adult equivalent of what do you want to be when you grow up, which is the so what do you do question. My fiance's job means that we travel and live overseas quite a lot. I've been working as a primary school teacher in an international school for the last two years. Last week when we broke up for the summer holidays, I was also finishing up being a full-time teacher at the school because we're not gonna be in this country for another whole year. So with my parents at the weekend, they asked how Tom felt about my doing nothing now. And I replied that I wasn't going to be doing nothing. It was my summer holidays and I was gonna be reading books and making videos. And they were amused. Which brings me back to Mary Oliver's quote. It's always portrayed as something that's supposed to inspire you, but I always found it kind of confrontational. It felt like Oliver was the grown up asking me what I plan to do with my life, and I didn't really have a satisfactory answer. I'd either have to disappoint her, or lie, or perhaps worst of all, tell my muddled truth at the risk that she would be amused. However, in fact, in researching this video, I read for the first time the whole poem from which this quote is taken. It's called The Summer Day, and in it the poet spends the whole summer day lounging in a meadow and observing a grasshopper, simply marvelling at its existence. What Oliver is not at all saying is, what job are you going to do with your life? She's saying, meaningfully, really at the heart of it, what do you want the days, the moments of your existence on this planet to look like? What she's saying is that appreciating and observing the natural world is important, is a meaningful way to be spending your days, even though it might be precisely what others would see as doing nothing. Something I care about deeply is plotting a path through this kind of option forest of life, which is one that we can feel proud to be walking. It might not be conventional, it might mean watching a grasshopper on a summer's day. There is so much that we can see and do in life, and that the possibilities are endless is at once magnificent and kind of terrifying. Are we doing enough with our one life? Which leads me on to literature. Books to me are like magic portals in my one life. They're like a way I've hacked the system and can live not one, but hundreds or even thousands of lives. Reading for me is never doing nothing. It is one of the most important somethings that I do because after much thought and reflection and lived experience, I've decided that it's an integral part of my wild and precious life. But of course, books are not the only thing in my life plan. There's so many things that try to put us in boxes and hide all those interesting little side paths on the journey in life. People we know, negative thoughts, the YouTube algorithm. But we don't have to live our life in just one way, doing only one thing. And books show us that. Books aren't my only passion, and I also care deeply about creating a life that I love, that feels like I'm doing something meaningful for myself and also worthwhile for others. So I guess this meandering reflection is in part a way of sharing the fact that I intend to be making more content about living a meaningful life, finding your values, building positive habits, that kind of thing. For me, that process is completely entwined with reading, and reading regularly, reflecting on what we read, growing from what we read. Because if we haven't given it adequate thought and planning, the question of what we intend to do with our lives is kind of terrifying. And it's scary because it's important. And when somebody asks me what I'm doing or what I plan to do, I want to be able to tell them not what I think they want to hear, but what is true. And I want to not mind if the truth amuses them. And like Mary Oliver, I believe we should all have the courage to marvel at a grasshopper, to create and absorb those magical portals to other worlds and thoughts and ideas which are commonly known as books, without ever feeling that we're doing nothing. Or worse still, to be doing somebody else's something with our lives because that's what we felt we were supposed to be doing, rather than bravely following our own something even though it be there nothing. Thank you as ever for being here and watching. And if you're not already, please do subscribe for some new intentional living, best life kind of content, plus all of my regular bookish, peaceful, little joys, vlogs, chats about books, reflections, reviews, etc. Until next time, know that your life is wild and precious and full of meaning and value, whatever you're choosing to do with it. Goodbye.